Come get your victory. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on whatever time you have decided to tune in with us. We would like to welcome you to another episode of Victory at the Table Talk, where we have down-to-earth conversations about various topics to assist with your walk with Christ. Here at the table, you can get the victory, but you can also get a taste of Victory Apostolic Church right here in Matson, Illinois, where we are building victorious Christ-like lives. Enjoy this episode. Praise the Lord and welcome to another episode of Victory at the Table Talk. My name is Assistant Pastor Derry Switted, and I am also the Women's Director here at Victory Apostolic Church. And we are so excited today to welcome you to our new series, How I Got Over. My soul looks back and wonder how I got over. So we are joined here today with two beautiful women of God, Assistant Pastor Aretha Armstrong, who is also the director of the Healing Hearts Grief and Support Ministry here at Victory. And just excited once again to have Sister Angela Slater here who is the director of the community outreach today. So we are here to talk about how I got over the loss of a loved one, which is just really, a. sometimes it can be touching, sometimes it just tears at our heart. But today we want to put a different spin on it because we know as we look at how we feel about our loved ones, We are here to not only honor them, but to share how God and how far God has brought us. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. So, Sister Angie, is okay I call you that? I'm Sister Angie. You, Sister Sister Angie. Angie. (laughs) I'd like you to uh, share your experience with us, and I want you to talk about your beloved B, your sister Belinda Cheeks. Such a beautiful woman of God. And as I thought about you and she, I said, wow, this is awesome. She was your biological sister. She was your sister in Christ. She was your sister in ministry. She is your sorority sister Mm -hmm. from Delta Psi Epsilon. Mm -hmm. So share with us, tell us about your dear B. And she was my best friend. And your best friend. <laughs> All she right. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, oh, what can I say about B, Belinda Cheeks, Deaconess Evangelist Belinda Cheeks? Um, she um, it was the oldest of us of three. Mm-hmm. Um, always just a beautiful soul. Yes. Right? Um, but strong in the word, you know. And mm-hmm. when I think of B, B is the one who introduced our whole family to Victory Apostolic Church. Oh, um, I always remember her being so excited when she came to their first service. Okay, and she all she talked about was this church, you know. Okay, and so I had to come and see what's going on at this church that took my sister away. So I, okay, you know, I, I, I was kind of salty about it. For a <laughs> oh, oh my goodness, okay, and salty. So okay, <laughs> came to visit the church and um and it was everything that she you know talked about. Amen. And um, so that's when then it took our friendship and and biological sisterhood to another level because again yes she became my sister in Christ amen um, good good which was fantastic um, she was a hard worker mm-hmm. um, she was the um, the strength in our unity in our family spiritually beautiful um, just how she handled herself she was a um, very smart sister she you know always excelled academically. Um, just st- st- always on a straight path. I always said she was scared to breathe, but she was <laughs> <laughs> always on a straight path, was mm-hmm. always concerned about living right, but also, too, loved her family because that mm-hmm. was one of her biggest things that she said she was always concerned that wanted to make sure that her family um, were saved. 
Yes. So she prayed us all in, right? Oh, <laughs> that is awesome. So, you know, because <laughs> of that, myself, her, I think I followed her first here because I think Belinda was member number 41. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm number 81. Okay, and I think okay. her husband was like 90 or something like that. And then after that, my parents, you know, also came. Okay. Um. So Jess, and she was one that was serious about her ministry, you know, and yes. everything that she did. She loved the Lord. Mm-hmm. And she was, um, her faith was amazing. You know, okay. Especially, you know, during her cancer ordeal, she talked, her faith was just amazing. Yes, it was. Mm-hmm. Yes, it and was. We witnessed, we were able yes. to witness, witness that. Oh, my we God. Did. And it was just a beautiful thing. Yeah. Yes. She truly had her faith in, and at points where it would make me angry, you know, because we will go to the doctor and we'll get bad news. And she'd be like, well, oh, well, I guess I'm just still on the battlefield. And I'm like, don't you want to get mad? <laughs> you know? I'm like, come on. You're like, get all this faith. Mm-hmm. But till the end, her mm-hmm. faith taught me and mm. others that I've learned so much. Yes. And during that. Yes. And that is just one thing when I just think about her and that and just all that she's been in my life and, um, the, the transformation that I saw that God did in her life. Transformation. And mine, you know, mm-hmm. is amazing. Beautiful. That is so beautiful. Let's see, Assistant Pastor Armstrong, I'd like to, uh, as I thought about this topic, I'd like to address this to you. How I got over the loss of a loved one is almost an oxymoron mm-hmm. because uh, when I thought about that, I thought about my father. Mm-hmm. My father, he passed away the day before his 49th birthday. Okay. And I still miss him so terribly. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a hole in my heart. You know, I'm able to come to grips with it yeah. now mm-hmm. with his leaving. But I wanted to share with you, as you have ministered to others mm-hmm. who come to you, do you see that as an oxymoron? Do you ever get over that feeling, that loved one? Well, about grief, you're not trying to get over anything because you Mm -hmm. don't want to get over your loved ones because you do love them. Mm -hmm. You want to process your grief and also allow God to help you to manage the grief Mm -hmm. that you can move forward in life. So grief is a process. Yes. And it's hard work. However, God will give you the strength to make it through. And... um, yeah, oxymoron. People say, well, I got over, I got through. Yeah, and they are, and your grief is different. Everybody's grief is different. They go through it differently. And uh, however you feel that you have accepted your grief mm-hmm. at some point, there's no timetable on it. It's your I grief. I like that. It belongs to you. I like that. And you don't want to uh, uh, push grief away. You don't want to avoid it. You want to embrace it. Mm-hmm. You have to embrace your grief in order to make it through uh, the pain of it. So, yeah, um, people say, I, you know, I got over, I got over a recovery. How, whatever words you need to use and that it works for you, that works for you. If you're feeling better, you're feeling better. I mean, that's mm-hmm. your your grief. And mm-hmm. you don't want anyone to take away your grief mm-hmm. because we need it. We need it. God has put it here for us to process our pain, yes. um, make sure that we get yes. to joy. We trying to head to God's joy, you know, and so we want to make sure that we don't uh, look at grief. I think grief is looked at so negatively. Okay. Uh, however, yes. it's here, it's, it's here to help us and not to harm us. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. a way that God has uh, allowed us to have this grief to help us to make it through, mm-hmm. you know, and he give us that, uh, I will call it spiritual anesthesia. Oh, I love that. And he, yes, he, ex- he numbs us. Yeah. Yes. Uh, because we can't take in the whole process mm-hmm. all at once. Mm. And so it's just like when you have surgery and there's a wound, you know, you come out of surgery, you numb, you know, you have your morphine, yes. you know, your little morphine <laughs> button. Yes. You probably push that. Yes. And several uh, times. Several times. Because <laughs> okay. you, know, you don't want to feel the pain. Uh, right. But however, right. you don't want to avoid it. You have to allow yourself to go through some of that to even heal mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. wound, you know, because evidently you're going to have to stop, get off the morphine. Yes. And face the pain. Mm, that is so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much, Sister Angie. How do you? How would you like to expound on that? Because that's 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 awesome. I like mm-hmm. that. There is no timetable. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I like that. It, it definitely is. It. I, I definitely had to deal with that with my family because, mm-hmm. again, I felt that it was so difficult because I felt like I had to grieve three people, you know, mm-hmm. in okay. one. Okay. My best friend, my sister, and my sister in Christ. So it's mm-hmm. like all of that mm-hmm. I had to grieve. Grieve three mm-hmm. people. Yeah. Okay. And so that was difficult. But then yet I had to tell my mother, who had a very difficult time with her, my parents, that your grief is going to be different from my, I can't imagine grieving losing a child. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. so it, it yes. looked different, you know, yes, and, it and, and we couldn't compare, you know. The okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think with me, one of the things is you have to definitely deal with the grief. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I even talk mm-hmm. to people about it all the time, and yes. I tell them the one thing that I always tell people is whatever you're feeling, allow the feeling. Allow it. Yes. Because yes. it's necessary. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, it's part mm-hmm. of the process. Mm-hmm. It's part right. of mm-hmm. the healing. Let mm-hmm. it happen. Mm-hmm. And whatever brings you that piece of joy. Right. Yeah. Mine is remembering her smile. Oh, right. she had a beautiful <laughs> smile. You know, so she I see, was so beautiful. Yeah. Her yeah. smile. Yes. And then that brings me to that peace. Yes. And that mm-hmm. joy. Yes, mm-hmm. that I, I like that that you said to and you know to keep hold on to that feeling because I know when my father died and I was I was young I was still in college for many years I was angry mm-hmm. and I was angry at God mm-hmm. because I said why out of the, all the no good people in the world did you have to take my daddy. Yeah. My daddy was a Christian man. He was a loving mm-hmm. father, a loving okay. husband. And it took me years, far into my adulthood, mm-hmm. when I got the opportunity to understand that God is sovereign. Mm-hmm. But I had no one to tell me then right. to embrace that, to get old, not to get over it, but even to deal with it. I didn't even know how to deal with it until I got older. How are some of the things that you're able to help people just to understand that feeling that you're feeling is your feeling. How do you help people with that? Well, like I said earlier, you let allow yourself to feel that pain. They don't know, like you said, you wasn't taught that, uh, how to grieve, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, well, you know, further back in the days or we can say our parents or what have you, it was always be strong, yeah. you know, um, yes. be quiet, mm-hmm. um, don't express your feelings, you know. Mm-hmm. And so it affects us as we become adults, yes. you know. So now we're holding all this in because we feel like we feel embarrassed or we feel afraid to show our emotions. So it, be, it becomes very hard for us to express. Mm-hmm. And now now we are uh, allowing ourselves internalizing all this pain and it comes out in negative ways, mm-hmm. you know. So we mm-hmm. want to make sure that... Um, what I help with those in uh, in the support group, we do talk about that and how I would ask the question: um, How was you? Ta- how were you taught how to express your feelings through mm-hmm. grief? What was your first mm-hmm. grief mm-hmm. process? What was your first grief that you experienced? Your first loss, you mm-hmm. know. And people would go way back and say, "Well, you know." I lost my doll or, you know, they'll go just for <laughs> mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. That's a loss because yes. they cared about it, you know. Yeah. And whether anything that's valuable to you, a person or a thing, you know, because yes. people lose pets as well. Mm-hmm. However, what is value to you and, and close to your heart and the relationship you have with that thing or a person, you're going to feel the pain of grief, mm-hmm. you know. So in that I sense. Like that. So I just uh, allowed them to express um uh, feelings that they n- never was able to express. I like that mm-hmm. that your that your feelings are of value to mm-hmm. you. To I you. like that. Mm-hmm. I like that. I yes, go ahead. To back just to Surely, I think it's means. even a lot more difficult too mm-hmm. when you're in Christ. That's right. Mm-hmm. Because we are supposed to, you know, we always say we. We, we celebrate that person's passing because, you know, after yeah, having yes, the body yes, present with, with the, the Lord. Lord. Right. And so when you show your grief, and especially if it overwhelms you, it's the sign of lack of faith. or, or it, oh, is, it, oh. it is. And it so is. we yes. have to be you're very right. careful, careful with that even when you in Christ know mm-hmm. that it's okay because you're yes. still loved. You still love that right. Surely. person. Surely. You miss that person. Yeah. And it's not weakness to show. No, it's no. not. That grief. Right. And, you know, I think sometimes we're afraid, can I be human for a few minutes here? Exactly. Can I and be I think human? That's so, that is so important. Exactly. I mean, when you look in, uh, when you read the book of Psalms. Go ahead. They talk about mainly people in there, they're crying out to God first. Yes. Yes. Oh, my God, where are you, God? Yes. yes. You are silent. Yes, come on, my, my sister. My soul is going down into the pit. 
Mm -hmm. You know, please help me, God, mm -hmm. you know. And then when you keep reading down, as you go down the psalm, you'll see, uh, oh, my soul, put your hope in God. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, and they start mm -hmm. encouraging them yes. themselves in the Lord back yes. then, you know. Yes. And so they know who God is as a Christian. We know who he is. Yes. However, we need to uh, acknowledge that pain from being human, yes. as you said. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think it's so important, and no one is stronger then the grief, you know, God knows Jesus wept, so he felt yes. sad. Amen. So we're going to yes. be followers of Christ. We're going to imitate Christ. Yes. Right? Yes. Those okay. tears Those are cathargic. That's yes. right. They are very cathargic. Yes. If we can yes. just cry, cry. And, it's a and let it out. It is a cleansing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Let's see, Sister Angie, a, a while back you mentioned, you talked about transition, about the change. How has, you know, and I hate to say how you got over, but how has some yeah. of this invoked a change in your oh life? Oh, my goodness. Um, I, it totally changed my life. Like I said, my sister was my best friend. We, we went everywhere together. Okay. You saw one, you saw the other. Yes, um, yes. So I yes, think my did. biggest part that I had was I kept saying that I need to adapt to a new normal. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what that looked like, I couldn't fathom. Okay. However, um, I can't deny the presence of God throughout the whole process. Right. You yes. Know? So yes, I had to, Belinda had two fur babies that were spoiled. Oh, <laughs> right. Oh, you, oh. <laughs> and, and, you know, as you guys know too, even with her, when my sister passed, her husband passed six weeks after she did. Yes. Exactly. yes. Remember um, that. Remember so that. Yes. I had to take on all of that responsibility from them. Mm -hmm. I had to sell their mm -hmm. house. I had wow. to. Clear up everything. So I was renting, so I had to end up purchasing a home because I had to take in her fur babies. Okay. Um, so I also, I wasn't a driver because my sister and I was always together and she <laughs> right, was the road right. dog and I was her, <laughs> right. you know. Her. So I always tell people, I'm like, within a year, my life completely changed. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I'm like, I got a mortgage, a car oh. note, and two fur babies, oh, which I did not <laughs> see did not you know, in my yeah, right, right, right. Um, but however, I always think I know that that is what she would want me to do. Mm -hmm. um, I know that she is smiling down on that. Um, yes. Like, yes. oh, my God, my sister have grown up. Oh, you've grown up? <laughs> I had to grow up. Grown now. And, and, grown and, and, now. At 50, I had to grow up, y'all. had to grow up. <laughs> Uh, but it's just, I said, it's like, it's adapting to that new normal, yes. you know? Okay. And again, is I'm able to do that, one, with... With knowing, again, you hear all the time how you say, you know, you know that loved one is with Christ and we are to rejoice yeah. in yes. that. Yes, 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 we hear that, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, that church talk. Yes, yes. yes. It's like, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. know that, but I think the main thing that helped me to transition better and to get used to my new normal mm -hmm. is knowing, I just remember the joy, yes. the peace on her face, mm -hmm. even in her transition. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Um, she was, I, I think about our last conversation, mm -hmm. which was five days before she passed yes. in the hospital, before I had to sign her into hospice. She was, you know, at the inner hospital bed and she woke up and she called to me and I went running because I thought she was in pain. Okay. But she looked up at me. She said, well, sis, she said, I guess there was a conversation about me in heaven and uh. this is what God decided. And wow. I was like, okay. Was and I'm like, okay. So Wasn't that beautiful? Beautiful. Isn't that? Yeah. So yes. we talked about that. That's and um, because her faith was so amazing, sometimes yeah. I thought she was in denial. Uh -huh. Okay. But I found through that last conversation that she wasn't. She it still wasn't. was holding on to the promises of God. But yeah, yes, 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 yes. I realized that God's will for her life mm -hmm. was what was taking, taking place. place. Mm -hmm. And she had finally, oh. she was at that place where she was able to accept, accept that. that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So mm -hmm. when we talked about that and she just wanted to make sure that everything was okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. everybody was Still. okay and so we talked about that and when she was in hospice the you know the day before she passed um she was wrestling a little bit you mm -hmm. know because mm -hmm. she knew that time was coming and i think what it was that time because her husband at the time was in a nursing home and yes. like he wasn't able to I come remember and see that. her yeah, remember yes. that. Yeah. i remember that um, i remember that very well yeah, yeah. so i i put him on the phone and I said, you know, you know, Chico, you need to let her go because she mm -hmm. let her hear your voice. I believe she hears you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And sh and he did that. And I remember she had this smile on her face. Uh -huh. And oh. then the next morning she passed. And when I tell you, when I walked in that room when she passed, 
the smile that was on her face. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. That's giving me chills. Thank mm-hmm. you, Father. Yes. Yes. Oh. Ah, I said, I want to go do this. That's yeah. all right. That's right. That's but a, that's the smile okay. she had on her face, I knew Ooh. right then. I'm like, I see where she met her father. Yes. Oh, that was what she lived her life for. Yes. Right? Yes. And yes. so with that, yes. and I remember crying a little bit, but then it's like I stopped in the middle and I looked down and I'm like, is she smiling? <laughs> <laughs> yes. She had a lot and to smile that, about. Yes. yes. And so that, I think about that all the time, and that helps me every day. Every day. Oh, I praise miss the her Lord. Thank you, every Father. day. Yes. 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 I miss her every day. Okay. But, again, when I think about that smile, even in her living and her death, yes, that's what helps me through my new normal. Oh, praise the Lord. We, that was we, so beautiful. It's, it's, mm. it's tough, and I tell people all the time it's tough, but I cannot deny God's presence in that. I know for a fact that I would not have been able to deal with the loss of my sister, best friend, mm-hmm. without mm. God's presence mm. in her life as well as mine. Oh, and man. she showed that even in her passing. Oh, beautiful. And that that's what got me over. Yeah. Oh, it's no magic yeah. pill. It ain't no, nothing. No, no magic pill. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Nobody but God. Nothing is. Nobody but the Lord. No. Yeah. Yes. Praise that. I like that. Thank you, Father. Mm. Thank you so much for that. Yes. Thank you so much for just opening your heart. Yes. To us. Thank you. Sharing that. I um I have a quote here from um Dr. Yolanda Pierce from her book In My Grandfather's House, My Grandmother's House. Mm-hmm. She said this we need to speak their names because the ancestors never die unless we fail to remember them. Yes. Isn't that beautiful? How can you, I want you both to uh, start with you. I always in the the Healing Hearts group, I always support ministry. I always talk about when they come to the group and you introduce your loved one, the first thing Mm. I say, they have a name, not my husband. Not my mother. Like, what is what was the, what is their names? Mm-hmm. So when they speak about them, we want them to use their name. Mm-hmm. You know, we want okay. them to express their names at all times. Mm-hmm. So they was like, "Wow, well, I was scared to do that." Some would say, because people would like look at me funny, you know, or you know, make them feel like you know they shouldn't be talking about them like that, you know, okay. because they're not here. You know, a lot of times people when they don't understand your grief, they're uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Okay. They are uncomfortable okay. with your grief. Yeah. You know, okay. because either they haven't been through it or they don't want to go through it and they think about their own mortality. Okay. You know, in okay. that sense. But yeah, mm-hmm. just helping them through this and mentioning their names. That's why I always say, you know, celebrate your loved ones. Yes. yes. You know, yes. Uh, whatever you want to do with that, make sure you mention their names, make sure they uh, continue to be in the family. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, just because they absent uh, in body, they are here in spirit, you know, mm-hmm. and want to continue to uh, keep their names alive, mm-hmm. you know, Absolutely. and just celebrate them, and, you know, and then overcoming that, you know, we, that helps you to be an overcomer for your grief when you start celebrating them and uh, talking about the memories, the good memories that yes. you had and sitting yes. around talking about that. Yes. And I think overcoming also can mean that you overcame some of this pain. Mm-hmm. It's not as intense as it was right. when it first happened. Yeah. Right. So we do right. overcome the pain. Yeah. And we're able to live on and have that purpose that God has given us because we're still here. Uh, he still has a plan. There's meaning to life. We have to mm-hmm. be patient and allow ourselves to go through this process so he can restore us mm-hmm. into our new normal. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And put us back on track. I like that. And keep us moving until our turn comes. Amen. Amen. Oh, Amen. how beautiful. How mm-hmm. beautiful. Angie, you want to? Uh, well, definitely got to get you. So I, Belinda was um, our director over Victory Outreach. Mm-hmm. So I took that role on yes. after mm-hmm. she passed. Yes. Um, so that was one of the ways that I said I will continue her legacy on that. She yes. loved outreach. She yes, loved she giving to those less fortunate. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. and so I took and and the ministry as a whole. That that's what we do, and they loved it. And they're all like, we want to continue to honor 
Belinda's yes. legacy with yes. that outreach. Um, so definitely do that. It's tough every Sunday to walk in here because, again, she loved victory. Yes. <laughs> and so okay. to come in here and, and her presence is throughout, you know, this church. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was mm-hmm. one thing that would be difficult is not seeing her, okay. you know, on a mm-hmm. pew pit or doing her thing, you know, around mm-hmm. yeah. here. Right, right. Uh, but with that, you, you, I, I, again, that gives me peace because I never forget. Mm-hmm. Right. 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 So mm-hmm. that's how I continue her legacy. And even within our family, we do that all the time. You know, when we oh. get together for Thanksgiving and all the stuff, right. we still mention, you know, right. her and yes, she. Absolutely. Right. Although they're that's not absolutely. here, they're still present. Right. You know? Yes, I like present. that. They're Although they're present. not here, they're, they're, still, still, present. they're still present. I yes. love that. All the time. Yes, they are and still so, physical. And we finally have gotten to a point where we can mention well, some of us more than others. My dad still have a hard time mentioning her name and yeah. falling yeah. apart. Mm-hmm. But um, is to be able to talk about her and mention her yes. name and mm-hmm. enjoy the mm-hmm. memories, mm-hmm. you yes. know, without that. So that way that keeps them near and dear because you don't forget them. No, you don't yes, forget. I like that. I yeah. like that. Yeah. I know my in my family, we my father, I, my, William Heron. Mm-hmm. Yes. 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 His name is name. William Heron. I say <laughs> yes. his name. William Heron. Because uh-huh. my sister and I, we talk about our dad, like the funny stories, mm-hmm. the things right. he used to mm-hmm. do. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, Every time, you know, I think I, I do get sad mm-hmm. because he was yes. not here when we graduated from college. Yeah. yeah. He was not here to walk either of us down, down the aisle. aisle. Yeah. He's never seen my children. Mm. Yeah. And he, you know, he's never seen my grandchildren. But every time I look in my son's face, you I see, see my him. father. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because yes. my son looks just like my father. Yeah. Mm. Wow. And so we do, we speak his name. And because my children did not know him, mm-hmm. I make sure they know their grandpa William. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I right. tell them the, the same time he about loved him. cars yeah. and he loved to fish. So that's, those are some of the things that we yeah. do to keep their memories alive uh, yes. in the family. I named mm-hmm. my son after him. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. His name's Kyle William. Mm-hmm. Who named yeah. his son after him? Kyle oh, Williams. So, so that, so lives that on. name it, right. lives on. So yeah. that name lives on yeah. in our family. Yes. So mm-hmm. that's that's a, that's the beautiful part of it. Any ending thoughts as we go? Because this has been such a beautiful conversation, and it is my prayer that our coming together and mm-hmm. talking would at least give someone a new perspective on their their loss. Mm-hmm. Any any final thoughts? I just want to say um, grief is tough and it's hard. We're not going to deny that. But just want to give you hope that you can make it through with God's help, with the people, with support, Mm -hmm. support groups, uh, prayer, uh, being human, you know, allowing yourself to be human and have someone around you that won't judge you. So Mm. you can be human and be spiritual at the same time. I mm-hmm. love that. Sister mm-hmm. Angie, final um, thoughts? I think I could piggyback on it. It's just allow yourself to go through the grief, mm-hmm. um, the process that you have to go through. Um, never beat yourself up for crying or not having a good day. Because mm-hmm. I tell people I have good days. I have my bad, bad days. days. Mm-hmm. Um, but the bad days just mean you love. Love. That person. Oh, yes. You miss that person yes. that yes. you love. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's not a sign of weakness. It's called love. love. Thank yes. you. Grief is love. Thank you. Grief I like that. Love. Mm-hmm. I like Grief that. Is love. So that's what Keep I tell everybody. Love. love. Remember that mm-hmm. person. Love that person. And another thing I say, too, is is if that person was a fantastic person like my sister B was. <laughs> yes, she was. Um, she was. When you remember that, you always you want to live your life the way you know they will want you to. Absolutely. Yes. Mm-hmm. As well. You know, so... Love on that person, even while they're gone. You still love them. You still miss them. Think about them. Live the way you know they will want you to live. And just let the process happen. And rely on those that God sends you Mm -hmm. to help you through that process. Right. Amen. Amen. Ladies, this has just been such a beautiful time of sharing. And I believe in my heart that someone who is watching was help today. Amen. Amen. I really Praise do. God. I really Praise do. God. So Sorry. God bless both of you. Mm-hmm. Thank you, our audience, for watching Victory at the Table Talk, the women's series, How I Got Over I the got Loss over. of a Loved One. My soul looks back in wonder how, how I, got I got Over. over.
You're the choir member. You can sing us out. But anyway, <laughs> God bless you all. Thank you so much. We will see you for the next episode in our series. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye. Come get your victory at the table. Let's talk. Let's talk. Come get your victory.